the team of the 90s. There's the pass to Leitner. Puts it up. Yes! Two national championships, three more trips to the Final Four. A decade flooded with Blue Devil excellence. Now, Coach K and the Devils begin a new decade with the same dreams of dominance. Today, Gary Williams in Maryland. Welcome Duke to College Park in a top 20 showdown. All-American Terrence Morris leads the Terps as they look for revenge in this big time ACC rivalry. From venerable Cole Fieldhouse on the campus of the University of Maryland, NCAA basketball on CBS, an ACC encounter, Duke against the Maryland Terrapins. along with Billy Packer. What a wonderful way for us to begin our coverage of NCAA basketball in the new century. These are two very young but still very talented team. One of the few veterans for Duke, Shane Battier. Well, one of the premier forwards in the country. We're going to see him, two of them today. Sean Battier leading the ACC in free throw shooting. He's really stepped up his offensive play this year. Last year, he was the defensive stopper. He can still do that, but Duke looks for him to score as well this year. And for Maryland, Terrence Morris, certainly one of the premier forwards in the nation. Seven of ten categories offensively. He is in the top ten in the ACC. There's nothing this young man can't do. Maryland has won its last 14 games at home. The last defeat, a thumping from Duke. CBS Sports Coverage of the Road to the Final Four is sponsored by Nortel Networks. We're building the new high-performance internet. Pennzoil with Pure Base, made for the way you drive. Stop, go, Pennzoil. And by Bud Light, for the great taste that won't fill you up and never lets you down, make it a Bud Light. Up. And here's Juan Dixon puts it in the hands of the freshman Steve Blake. That's 112 blocks in the year for Maryland. The next team in the ACC only has 80. This club can get up there defensively. Look inside for Terrence Morris. They kick it back to him. He takes the jumper. Rebound over the back foul is called. Vern, I was uh, noticing the balls in the warm-ups today. These balls are pumped up very heavily with air. Look for a lot of long rebounds in this basketball game, particularly when you have two teams that aren't afraid to put it up from the outside on the break. Foul called on Steve Blake. Carwell puts it in the hands of the freshman. Jason Williams, that'll be a terrific matchup to watch throughout the game. There's a nice pick by Shane Battier. The drive from Williams too strong. Danny Miller comes down with a rebound. Good hit ahead. Juan Dixon loses control, takes the jumper at any rate. Just the two, but you can see Maryland is really going to be aggressive today. Now, what's hurt them? They've lost five straight to Duke. The press has not been effective, but so far it is. Steal in the basket from the freshman Blake. The team that Maryland matched up against in the last four games against Duke, we know what a prolific outside shooting team it was, so the press really wasn't effective. So far, Maryland has taken advantage of it. Carowell, guarded by Miller, comes back outside. Looks inside and gets it in the hands of Battier. Terrence Morris has him. Up and under, too strong. Loose ball, oh. up and in, lucky bounce. Who are you going to give that to, Vern? I can't imagine. I, I think maybe a Maryland player touched it last. Here's Blake with the penetration. Nice drive. Good defense by Duke. Now he can get a little better play than that. Freshman guard has to slow down a little bit. You know the adrenaline's flowing. Nate James, first Duke basket. James has been a steady performer. Nate James. Picks up the outside shooting for this team second Duke basket after the tip in just a moment ago. Now here's Juan Dixon. I would fault that basket to Blake taking a shot a little bit too aggressively on the earlier possession. Rejected. Blocked by the elbow. Yes it was. 
Now Carowell, right side, they go Nate James. Charging foul. Nice job by Blake. Really bad spacing on the fast break that time by Duke. They had two players hand-to-hand. -hand. We'll see it right here. And that's the reason that James had no opportunity to get the proper angle for the cut. Now Blake picked up by Williams. Good time to let Morris handle the ball in this half-court set. Baxter takes the jumper too strong, but he does draw the foul. Called on Carlos Boozer, the freshman from Juneau, Alaska. Baxter this year has scored in double figures all but one game. That was six he had against Kentucky. The young man has really come out. He's six foot eight, but one of those wide bodies that takes good position in the low post and understands what his role is and understands what his physical abilities are. Tough man to stop. High with 14 rebounds against Notre Dame this year. Not a great leaper, but good body position. Gets the put back, and it won't fall. No block out on the foul shot by Duke. Now Duke underneath the boozer. And that foul will be called on Danny Miller, his first. We're seeing so many, so many outstanding freshman guards in the country. There was Williams with a tremendous pass. Boozer really running the floor well. Yesterday in that, that, I won't call it a huge upset, but it was an upset beating Stanford at their home court. Jason Gardner, another freshman in a sensational basketball game. Carlos Boozer, who of course becomes the second Alaskan to star for Mike Krzyzewski, Trajan Langdon the first. Well, Boozer had a great breakout game for us on CBS when they beat Michigan. He had 25 in that one. Slowed down early in the season with that foot injury, but has come on strong since. 7-0 Duke run. Here's Blake, Juan Dixon. Carowell out defending him. Entry pass to Baxter. Short with a shot. Loose ball picked up by Battier. Now Jason Williams. James with the entry pass. Boozer, and it's dropped by James, turnover Duke. That's a good pass. James just took his eye off it. Boy, Boozer doing a tremendous job getting up and down the floor, getting to the low box in a hurry. And I think if he's going to play behind Baxter the way he has so far, Baxter can get, in the, get him in some foul trouble. Oh, beautiful pass, and the shot too strong. Danny Miller cannot afford in a game like this to miss that kind of shot. Well executed half-court set. Carowell, the double team comes from Dixon, the putback from Carlos Boozer. It's amazing when you miss the shot, you ought to have Vern, how things seem to break down. I think everybody kind of lets down on that one. Terrence Morris has not touched the ball in these half-court sets. They've got to let him get involved. Here's Baxter muscling his way, blocked, blocked again, and this one is a jump ball. Well, you can give that to Battier or Boozer. They both had a hand on it. As I said, when Baxter is only about 6'8", so he's given up a couple of inches to Boozer, and he's not that great a leaper, so he can't take that much time to get the shot off. It's got to be a wheel and then in. Baxter 0 for 6 from the field so far in the game. Now, he's 0 for 6, and Morris hadn't touched it for once. Right. Boozer. That'll be uh, Dukes to inbound. Good reach in by Dixon. scored the first four, but they've fallen behind by five. Nine four Duke. Duke coming in with a 10 and two record. How about the undefeated list? Well, then there was one. Syracuse won 10 in a row at home, went down, played in a tough place at Miami, very successfully. Stanford losing to Arizona yesterday. Lou Olson's 600th victory. What an outstanding coach there. And LSU lost to Tennessee, who's off to the best start they've had in the SEC. Tennessee, a strong basketball team. 9-4 here, Battier, Boozer. Underneath, Carlos Boozer is fouled as he goes up. Boozer's so strong with two hands. One of the things I love about him inside is that not only is he a strong player physically, but he keeps two hands on the ball, so it's very difficult on the putbacks to stop him. Gary Williams is going to go to his bench for the first time. Mike Martisic ready to come on. But Boozer will shoot two. 
Every time I see Marta Sitch in a big game, I think back to the incredible game he had against the University of North Carolina two years ago, where you'd said, boy, this kid in a couple of years is going to be a great one. Things haven't worked out for him, but they could use his size on the floor right now. One of two at the line for Boozer and a 10-4 lead for Duke. Well, here's where Blake, as a freshman, has to understand, hey, we've got an All-American player. Make sure he touches the ball. Five seconds, great one-on-one -on -one defense by Williams. That is the first Maryland turnover. They uh, had the turnover blues in an ACC road loss to North Carolina State Thursday night. They yeah. turned it over 25 times. Yeah, you, you know what's interesting? They're turning the ball over on their three losses 24 times a game. They have outshot their opponents that they lose to, but you can't afford to turn it over like that. Williams Jason is, Williams in the lane. He's eaten Blake up so far in this ball game. Back it goes to Martisic. Looks underneath to Miller. Up. Ah! The tip will not go. Two for 15 now for Maryland. And there's, the there's Boozer again with that two-handed snatch. Williams finds Carowell. Puts it on the floor. Crowd thought he traveled. Wow. Instead, he cans a three. Chris Carowell, an explosive scorer at Michigan when we had him. He was sick that day and had one of his few off days, but he has been big from the outside. Duke has scored 15 unanswered. Time out. Rick Hartzell came over to our monitor to determine if that last basket was three or two. Well, you can see, Vern, right here, feet are over that line. Obviously, it is a two-point field goal, so they took it off. It's a correctable error situation. New in college basketball this year. Vern, how about a line here? What is a pass that's thrown behind the line of scrimmage? I've You're always the thought, football man. I, I, I thought that was a backward man lateral. alive. Joe Theismann, he was giving us all kinds of stuff I yesterday. I don't learned. understand. Hey, hey, football guys, they need to stop wearing those helmets. It should be the the band should have to have both feet and the ball above the line, like in basketball. It'd be a simple call. Sure, it'd be simple. They miss again. The what? killer is that indisputable visual evidence. As Mike Dunleavy is on for the first time, the freshman from Lake Oswego, Oregon, the sixth man for Mike Krzyzewski. That was short. Christensen with another good two-handed putback. Matt Christensen also came in during the timeout. Here is Blake from Maryland. They desperately need a basket. Juan Dixon will try and give it to them. Two good outside jump shots from Dixon. 14-6. He's gone 15 games without a three. Excuse me, six games without a three. He's missed 15 straight. Those have been just inside the line. Battier at the other end. And it's back to a 10-point margin. In that road loss, North Carolina State Thursday. Morris up. And one of the first times they've gotten the ball in his hands. Well, you know, one of the things that teams have to recognize, this is one of the things that a freshman guard sometimes lets get away from him, particularly with the emotion riding in the game. When you have a player of Morris's uh, significance, you have got to give him a lot of touches early in the ball game. Make Duke have to work to guard him. Then other things will be open. They've gone to second and third options instead of going to number one right away. Terrence Morris, the junior preseason All-American, gets the first of two. Now Martisic and Danny Miller leave. And Calvin McCall, who was the starting quarterback on the Terrapin football team, is on the floor for the fourth time this year. He joined the ball club after overcoming a medial collateral injury sustained in football. Well, we watched him in practice yesterday. He did make some mistakes because he's getting into his basketball psyche now. But he brings a lot of enthusiasm and energy. We saw Julius Peppers with big rebounding game for North Carolina the other night coming off that football field, so he'll help him. Blake chases down the turnover, takes Williams to the basket. Takes him on hard, and there is no basket, but the putback was strong. Well, Morris gave a facial expression after making that. He better realize this Duke team is going to try to score 100 points. You've got to keep running. Morris puts it in the hands of McCall. Jumper, no. Loose ball on the floor. As McCall. I said, he'll hustle. Great effort by both teams here. There's Blake going up. Williams gets a piece of that one. And here comes Morris over the top, puts it in. 
Nope, Jason didn't get a piece. I thought he did. And there's Morris with an excellent follow-up. Both teams wanting to run the floor. Dixon. Nope. Nate James on the rebound for Duke. Here comes Carowell. No numbers, though. Nope. So they'll go to the half-court set. Battier for three. He likes oh, that man. shot. He likes that shot. Jerry Williams is irate because yesterday, one of the things he said is we never allow Battier to get that open shot at the top of the key. Battier with five. It's a nine-point Duke lead. At one point in his career as a freshman, he missed 20 straight threes. Much more confident now. Another block, this one Dunleavy, and he comes out with the ball. And there it's taken away by Dixon. Two more for Morris. And Morris has now gone over 1,000 points in his Maryland career. 1,001. Mistake by Dunleavy trying to do too much against a team that's a pressing club. Boy, what a frenetic pace we're at here today in this game. Mistakes are being made, but there is no mistake in regard to effort. See, Dunleavy trying to do too much right here. When you're playing against somebody that presses like Maryland does, they've got good hand-eye coordination, good quickness with their feet, so it's best to give that ball up in the open court. Jason Williams, Nick Horvath comes on now for Battier, the freshman from Minnesota, number three. So it's Dunleavy, Williams, Horvath, Nate James, and this one put in the hands of James, now Jason Williams. Now here is a young team on the floor for Duke. Well, it really is. James, the real veteran out there. You've got four freshmen on the floor. And again, they're trying to do too much dribbling against a team that knows how to play the dribble. Dixon thought he had a man streaming down the left side. It was a ghost teammate. Yep. Time call. We welcome you back to the campus of the University of Maryland. Second ACC battle for both these teams in the Atlantic Coast Conference, of course. Arguably the most dominant conference in the country. Strong. They are strong, Brent. Something interesting. The ACC in past years has won as many as 80% of their outside games uh, leading up to conference play. This year, the SEC leads with 78% wins. The ACC is actually fifth at 71. They only got three teams in the NCAA tournament last year, so that is going to have a factor this year as well. So they've got to really start playing some good basketball to continue this uh, tremendous run they've had in the NCAA tournament. Mike Dunleavy inbounds to Nate James. It's the freshman Horvath, Williams, Boozer, and Dunleavy. And Maryland goes zone for the first time. This could slow things down a little bit in regard to that Duke offense. There's Dunleavy into James' hands, that's off the rim, and Dixon goes high to grab the rebound. Nice move by Gary Williams, goes zone, particularly with Battier out of the game, and Carowell, because you're not a lot of experience to recognize the defense. James takes it away. Off the glass and in. Hey, James. And Horvath is now playing Morris. You've got to go ahead and challenge Horvath with your star player. Little steps that time by Dixon. Dixon has moved to the point. And now Blake is going to come back in. CBS Sports Line will deliver the latest sports news and information to you via email every morning. Sign up today at cbs.sportsline.com or on America Online. Enter keyword CBS Sports Line. Good break of the double team by James. Horvath to Williams. Beautiful pass. Oh, Williams really sees the court well, doesn't he? Here's McCall. He needs to get the ball back outside to Blake and get something started in the half-court set. They're trying to do too much by guys that aren't the key players. Boozer has nine. Now Jason Williams slows it down. Martisic getting set, set to come back on the floor for the Terrapins. Horvath from the corner. Boozer, oh, he's had a strong first 10 minutes. There's a travel on McCall, another aggressive play, but when you catch it and go to the floor, it's an automatic walk, even though he fell over his own players. How about Boozer putting that back up left-handed? Nice move. Terrence Morris will rest for Gary Williams' team. Now Horvath took that outside shot. He beat DePaul with an outside shot. You've got James, pretty good outside shooter, Horvath. 
Dunleavy inbounds for Duke. Boozer has it. Dunleavy's got that standstill one-hander from out there. McCall goes for the steal. It's on the floor. Blake pulls it away. McCall gets in the middle of things, doesn't he? Underneath. Oh, beautiful block. But the putback is good. Dunleavy recruited as a six-foot, six-inch Maybe swing type player has grown now to be about 6'9", it seems like. Really went up in the air to put a block on that first attempt. He's got the ball in his hands now in the corner for Horvath. That nice positioning for the rebound. Now Blake. Jason Williams picks him up. McCall doesn't want oh, the three. I thought he was going for it. <laughs> Burr, Baxter gets it. Mike Giuseppe coming back with his veterans, but calls a timeout to get him in the game because he doesn't want much more time to go. Maryland making a nice comeback here. 9.32 to go, first half. 16 here, 9.32 to go in the first half of play. Maryland climbing back in. How about these teams unranked in the preseason? who have climbed into the top 25. Well, Bob Knight's club beat Penn State. They're on a nice roll in the Big Ten with two wins. Oklahoma, Kelvin Sampson doing another wonderful job there. LSU, as we said, knocked off by Tennessee. And Tulsa really playing well with only one loss so far. 9.24 to go first half. I like that timeout by Mike Krzyzewski there. You, you've got your two veterans on the sidelines. You want to get them in the game, but the pace of the game may have let maybe... Uh, four or five more possessions go before the clock was stopped. So he calls the timeout to get him out there to settle things down against his zone. Chris Carrawell will inbound it. Battier also back on the floor. Now Dunleavy. Stripped. Baxter. Drew Nicholas for Maryland off the bench. Tries to find Baxter. And that will be Maryland's ball. Friday on CBS, Action Romance Adventure TV Guide says, now and again puts it all together and adds up to one of the smartest shows on television. All new, now and again, Friday on CBS. Maryland was down 18 to four against NC State, battled back to take the lead in the first half. Today they're down 14 to four, and Vern, they're getting right back in this thing despite very poor shooting percentage. Nicholas and Blake, right side it comes. Now Duke shows a little zone of their own. There's Martisic. Nice high-low feed. Baxter, the tip goes. No, no, basket. no, basket interference. Martisic got a piece. This is a good high-low feed. You see Baxter inside, and then Martisic comes down. The ball just rolled one extra time for him. That's where he got a touch on it. Here we'll see him right there. He tapped the ball while the ball was in the cylinder. Left corner, James, entry pass to Battier. And there's, there's a case where Martisic has got to fight over the top in that back line of the zone. Ball goes to the corner. He's got to get over there on Battier. Not shooting foul. Carowell will inbound. Now Duke is a team that traditionally makes more free throws than the other team shoots. They have not been getting to that line so far in this first half. Testimony of the good aggressive play by Maryland without fouling. Air ball, but touched last by Nicholas, so it'll be Duke to throw it in. Now Battier. Danny Miller out on Williams. And Miller at six foot eight presents a real target out there. Williams, quick catch and release. Called on Carowell. Even though Williams missed that shot, I liked his technique there. He had a rough shooting game against University of Virginia the other night, but he was prepared, as you said, Vern, to catch and shoot. He didn't have to think about it. Good reflective action on his part. Now the two freshmen renew their battle. Williams picks up Steve Blake from Miami Lakes, Florida. Back Blake, screen, turn around. Nope. Martisic grabs it, though. Artis just having a pretty good first half here in relief. Terrence Morris stays on the bench. Here's Baxter underneath. Gets his own miss. Martis edge up on the floor. Foul. Dunleavy from the backside. Gary Williams loves it. Martis and Baxter just banging around inside. Hey, 
Well, you see the uh, distribution of ACC tournament titles. North Carolina with 15, Duke and NC State with 10. Maryland, a small piece of the pie. Two. Martisich at the line. You notice somebody up there without any was also Clemson. And without any also, they go again to North Carolina this past week and lose again for the 46th time. I mentioned in that game, Vern, that is not the record in the NCAA play. Brown has 49 straight losses at Princeton. Not something to brag about, huh? No. I, <laughs> 49. You got to figure one night the guys got sick or something out, you know? You realize the last time they won was when you and I were teenagers? Uh, they, no, it was in the 20s. Oh, really? Uh, so maybe when you were a teenager. Uh, James for three. Got it. Nate James having some big games. 18 against Michigan. His biggest game of the year was 22 that he had against DePaul. So he's coming up with some big numbers when given the opportunity. Nicholas kicks it left. There's the pass to Dixon. Nice cut. There's the difference between getting in your set and shooting at the frenetic pace that they did at the start of this ball game. Getting some good back screens and they stay in the zone with Miller out on top, making it tough to shoot right at the top of the key. Baxter has six for three. Nice Martisic. strong rebound, Martisich. That's four boards for Mike Martisich. Hey, the zone has given Duke some problems. And I think what Duke is going to have to do is start going inside and then out against the zone. Second steal by James for a layup. Double dribble. Yep. yep. He really couldn't get control of that ball. We see the pass. James, good pump faking. Gets his man in the air and then a nice solid shot. Local product. And there's that feed to Baxter. The Blue Devils have cooled off from the field. Uh, Maryland now shooting 25%. They started out two for 15. Look at the blocks, seven to five. Both of these teams, as I mentioned at the top of the show, Maryland came into this game with 111 blocks as a team. Far and away leading the ACC, but Duke is uh, doing a good job in that regard this, today as well. Now Terrence Morris back on the floor. He has had a quiet first half, six points on two of five shooting. Duke gets out of the zone, goes back to the man-to-man. -man. Blake comes right side. Danny Miller with a penetration on the jumper. Wow, Battier took that away from Morris. And gets it to Jason Williams. Carowell. Duke, here's what Duke is doing. Everything on the attack against the zone is from the perimeter on swings. They've got to hit the ball down inside as Maryland did with Baxter a couple of possessions ago. Too easy to defend if you just rotate the ball around the outside. Morris kicks left side. Nate James on him now. Another five. That's the second one. Great defense by Williams. Blake upset with himself. But nobody came to help him. You notice that? Everybody was standing still. When he realizes that's happening, he's got to put the ball on the floor and go by his man. Now, look at Morris is out at the top on this zone now. If you think you can get a jump shot off over him out there, you're crazy. James puts it on the floor and comes left. See, the ball's not going inside at all. Carowell with Morris. They've got to occupy Morris with the ball. There it goes inside. Then you get the jump shot. A little too strong, and Baxter pulls it down. Almost taken away by Battier. That is eight rebounds for Baxter already. Oh, my goodness, Shane Battier. Maryland's ball. Good job that time by Morris. A smart play. Instead of putting pressure on Williams, he just let him roll out of bounds. We'll see this block by Battier. Great timing, and the ball was on the way up. Martisic turns around, double team, short with the shot. Boozer in traffic, gets it to Battier. Elliott. Oh, nope. That was Baxter that went up and challenged that lob. Tonight on CBS, it's the People's Choice Awards, honoring your favorites in TV, movies, and music. Don Johnson and Cheech Marin host this star-filled event. Find out who will be the People's Choice as 
tonight on CBS. Vern, when you have a guy like Morris at the top of the key in the zone, you should throw the ball out to the wings. Don't challenge him at the top once it goes inside. Get it in and then go to the wings. There it comes left side. And in. the entry pass, there you are. Absolutely. That's the way to attack this zone. And if you're Maryland, do the same thing when Duke goes into his zone. Martisic with the foul on Boozer. Second foul for Mike Martisic, the seven-footer. Remember the last time they went inside, Boozer threw it back out to Williams, who at six foot one is not going to get as good a shot over Morris as if you threw it to the wings and let Carowell or James have the shot. 9.7 rebounds for the freshman from Juneau, Alaska. Make it 10 points. Took an eight-hour plane ride for this guy to get home for Christmas holidays. Got a chance to be home for four days. Saw how much snow he had. There hadn't been much snow in Durham, North Carolina this year. So <laughs> I hope he enjoyed it there in Steamboat Springs, Alaskan Steamboat Springs, where my partner lives. We're about had about a call for the snow, right? Thank, thank you for the opening, Billy. We had 16 inches yesterday. Uh, I checked with the Chamber of Commerce this morning. All runs are operating. <laughs> Baxter. Here's Juan Dixon with a little runner, got it. I watched him in practice yesterday. He has great foot speed and quickness and loves that floating shot. Even though he's a little bit frail in looks, he's one of those wiry guys that doesn't mind going inside. From the corner, Nate James. Way up in the air, Baxter tips it. Goes right to Boozer, short off the rim. And down comes Danny Miller. Danny Miller's six foot eight, not afraid to get inside as well. Here's Blake, takes the jumper for three. And Maryland right back in this thing. Thought that was kind of an ill-advised shot. He had a struggle to get it off, but when they end, good play by Miller. Danny Miller. Mike Krzyzewski won't go time out here. He's already used one. He won his veterans, and there you see Battier. Just trying to calm everybody down. And Maryland employs a big man at the top of the key that makes it a little bit more difficult to get shots off. Carowell quiets the crowd for the moment and reestablishes a five-point margin for Duke. Williams with the foul. That's his first. And that is the sixth Duke team foul. Pretty clever dribbling move by Blake that time to pull it back out. Duke lead. Their largest lead was 11. Tough, uh, tough week for teams in the top 25. Well, Vern, I don't think we're going to see with the way there's parity in college basketball now. You're going to see losses throughout the course of college basketball. I think with a team that we don't see on that list right there, that'll move the number one will be Cincinnati. Kenyon Martin, in my opinion, playing better than anybody in the United States right now as an individual player. Another big win last night for Cincinnati as they handled uh, Marquette, right? And just uh, trounced their rival, UNC Charlotte, that had them two wins out of three last year. Here it's Morris. Got him the ball right where he loved to operate. Maryland has done a much better job in their half-court set than has Duke in the last six or seven minutes. See what's happened to Duke since the uh, zone has been employed by Maryland. Here's Dudley. Got it. He loves that standstill one-hander. And Martisic hustled to get out there, but again, the height that Dunleavy has gotten since he came to Duke enables him to shoot right over people that are seven feet. Danny Miller, oh, beautiful pass. Good screen by Morris, good curl move by Dixon. Maryland really running their offensive sets nicely now. Williams, Carowell. Battier calls for it, they go in the corner. Dunleavy with a pump fake, and three-second violation. Coming up on Pennzoil at the half. Jim Nance will get you caught up on all the scores and highlights, plus a look at North Carolina senior Ed Cota, who's trying to lead the Tar Heels back to the top of the ACC. Boy, did he have a game last night but well, they their win over NC State. I think the only thing that Ed Cota has going against him sometimes, he's very passive at start of games. And he makes himself hard to guard early on. He is tough. Great passes. The all-time leading assist man at the University of North Carolina history. Foul on Morris. Monday night, there is no more football.
CBS, the only place to be beginning with the King of Queens. And then it's Ladies' Man, Monday's number one comedy, Everybody Loves Raymond, followed by Becker, and then see why millions of viewers have made Family Law, Monday's number one drama. It's an all-new, all-Monday on CBS. Duke only now has seven free throws that they've attempted in this first half. That's very unlike Duke. It means that they're probably not in their half-court sets as well as they'd like to be. They like to be on the foul line. Battier, as I said, leads the ACC in free throw shooting. Young man has worked on every facet of his game, keeps improving all the time. Really a remarkable kid. Dixon on the floor. The pass inside to Danny Miller. Dixon. Chase down, it'll be Maryland ball. Blake had to make a passing lane available when Miller was hung up inside. Maryland lucky to get away with that one. Dixon, in and out, tipped out of bounds by Mike Martisich. Been a great first half by Martisich. He's really hustling. Took a lot of verbal abuse yesterday in practice. But, uh, From that man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Gary, a great competitor, played his basketball here at the University of Maryland. Dream job to come back, coaches alma mater. Been successful every place he's ever been. Into the corner, James. Carowell, he loves that little shot inside. But there was it. What made that work is that unlike Maryland, who players did not cut to a guy in trouble, Carowell helped out his pass. Ten point margin, time call. Thirty-seven, twenty-seven. Duke. They've been on a seven-nothing run. Mike Shashevsky in his twentieth season as head coach at Duke. Not bad there. Honored this year with the John Wooden Award, which is as prestigious as you can get in coaching. Only the second guy honored, Dean Smith, being the first. So there you've got Coach K and. Dean Smith, the two first two recipients of that the prestigious award. And Coach K enjoying his role as a grandfather now. As is Gary Williams, as far as that goes, as is Billy Pack. That's right. We were kidding about it yesterday. I like him better than kids. And as Al McGuire said, their nose pressed against the window as they leave is the best scene you could ever have. From the corner. That's not true with mine. I love to see him come. Carowell with a jumper, got it. Boy, is he a veteran stepping up in this first half. Now Danny Miller will take the jumper, got it for three. Well, Carowell wondering why nobody else was out there on him. I think both teams, Vern, are playing up to their potential in this game, which is really great to see. Maryland's had all kinds of difficulties with Duke last couple of years. Last five times, they've won by an average of 21 points per game. Left side, Dixon takes it, puts it up left-handed off the glass, and the margin is five. And what Jason Williams is learning is that Maryland being a pressing team is not somebody to dribble in traffic against. Make the good cut, clean passes, get the ball inside and then out. Williams Chase. lost it. Happened again to him. Hurry. No. Now we saw the talent. I don't know that we saw the youth. It was a well-played, terrific first half. 39-34 at the break. Let's go back to New York and Jim Nance. All right, thank you very much there, Vern. Coming up on Pennzoil at the half, we'll have all the college basketball scores and highlights and a preview of today's AFC wildcard game between the Dolphins and the Seahawks. And a look at North Carolina guard Ed Cota. It's all coming your way after this message and a word from your local station. Four, and time to talk a little X's and O's. Well, one of the things that Duke has done very well in the past and not so well today is to read what the defense is giving them. Here we see in a game played earlier against Michigan where Jason Williams understands the double team's coming, bounces the ball inside as opposed to going to Carroll. Now Carroll, as we can see, is over in the deep corner to extend the defense. Solid screen by Battier. Williams will come off. Boozer then sets up a good passing lane. Williams looks right, then gets right down the center, and there's Boozer with a great two-handed finish. 
We're ready for the second half from Coalfield House. They created their microprocessor in 1971, and the faster their chips have performed, the faster their company has grown. Today, the Intel design is the brain's behind. CBS Sports coverage of the Road to the Final Four is sponsored by Michelin because so much is riding on your tires. NASDAQ, the stock market for a digital world. And by Nicoderm CQ, the power to calm, the power to comfort, the power to help you quit. 39-34 as we get set for the start of the second 20 minutes. And the Maryland Terrapins who fell behind 15 to 4 at one point early in the going. We'll open with the ball. Here's Steve Blake. Very when you look at those first half stats, Duke took 14 threes. One of the reasons why I think that they lost that good lead they had working for them is that they settled for the perimeter shot instead of going inside. Let's see what happened. It, it was the pass inside right away, but they've got to go inside more. Maryland, good comeback. Time for the Pennzoil halftime stats. A five-point margin. Neither team shooting exceptionally well. There's the ball on the floor, and Blake has it. Gets it in the hands of Danny Miller. Dixon calls for it. Takes the three. Nope. He's still without a three for six games. It's a wide-open shot. You can't ask for a better one. Rebound, Baxter. There's that wide body just cleaning everybody out inside. Nine rebounds for Lonnie Baxter. But Miller had the bounce pass for Morris inside and waited too long. Morris had Battier right where he wanted him on the hip. That's quite a matchup between those two forwards. Blake, nice back screening inside by Maryland. The passer's not ready to deliver. There's Baxter. They're too late with the pass. Foul called on Duke. Boy, when they go to look at this tape, and they'll see that the back screen is there, the passer's not ready to deliver as the man gets open. They're waiting for him to be perfectly set, and that's too late. Second foul on Nate James to open the second half. Boy, you hate it when your whistle breaks. Well, well, the coaches don't sometimes. <laughs> Good effort on behalf of both of these teams. It's the kind of game referees really have to move up and down the floor. In the corner, back outside to Blake. Get the double screen over here for Morris again. Blake not ready to make the pass. Goes right side for Miller. Battier. And there's James in the passing lane. Jumped up, got it. Duke ball. Trying to do too much with that pass. I mean, you know, it, it's the kind of thing, if you've got a working margin, you're up 18 points, try it. But in a game like this, the good two-handed pass under control is what Maryland needs. Chris Carrowell, Battier, takes the jumper baseline. Too strong. Nice timing by Dixon. And he gets it in the hands of Blake. No numbers there. Yeah, Dixon's had a game with 11 rebounds this year. He doesn't mind getting up on the court. There's that back screen. They're getting the back screen. That time Morris is ready to go ahead and deliver the pass. Steve Blake. You have to anticipate that when a man's coming off that back screen that he's going to be open and deliver the ball. No basket foul before the shot. Let's go back and take a look at the feed to Blake. Well, you can see. As Blake came under there, he wasn't open immediately, but you know he's going to be open, so you have to deliver the ball. Good job by Terrence Morris. Last foul on Lottie Baxter, his second. Carrowell takes the jumper as Baxter comes out to defend. And help. Really good job by Baxter defensively. Blake in the corner. Miller, entry pass to Morris. Taken away. That's the ninth turnover for Maryland. And at the other end, here's Williams. Beautiful lead pass that time, and Jason Williams did a smart thing. He reversed himself and let the ball bounce and then picked it up. Smart play. Five-point game. Williams went for the steal, picked up his second foul. Monday night, there's no more football, so now is your chance. 
to see why millions of viewers have made family law Monday night's number one drama. Don't miss the powerful all-new episode Monday on CBS. Nope, loser with a rebound. Jason Williams is going to have to realize that Duke doesn't have a lot of depth at his position, so he can't go and make some of those foolish fouls on the inside. He's got to play much more solid with his feet defensively. Terrence Morris with a rebound. Baxter, nice feed, too strong. Wasn't quite there. Amazing how he can get that big body up in the air, though. Battier for three. Over the top? No. Boozer really does an excellent job get underneath balls for rebounds, and then he goes up wide, strong shoulders, two-handed grab, and it's almost impossible not to foul him on that play. Third foul on Baxter, so he has to take the seat on the bench. Martisich back in, strong first half. Now this means that Carowell and Dunleavy will take on the ball handling responsibilities with this lineup. Mike Krzyzewski realizing in this game he needs Williams down the stretch, so he yanks it. Battier, yes. That's three straight short jumpers he's been able to take in his second half. Dixon shields himself, nice strong move. Boy, he did a good job protecting the ball to give himself a clean shot. He's got 10 points. And he's fearless, too. There are two six-foot, nine-inch guys there. He went right over him. Carowell, Beautiful. jumper, Kansas. Beautiful look away by Carowell. Carowell. 10 points for Carowell. And it's a seven-point Duke margin. You can see why Duke has had 500-point games. I mean, they just keep coming at you. A lot of people say they don't play defense the way Duke used to. But they're a different type of basketball team. Averaging 92 points this year. Oh, boy! Nice feed from Blake. Couldn't finish it. Martisic, and now the foul on Danny Miller. Great hustle by James. Put his nose right down on the floor and threw that foul. Time call. Miller occupies Carowell. The lane is open. Watch what happens. Jason Williams doesn't anticipate the back screen, and now Blake will come through. What Morris realizes, make the pass before he gets there, and you'll see what happens right here. Boom, there's the pass. Blake in the way, perfect. Maryland, a lot of times today, had that play. They just didn't deliver the pass in time. Duke has it right now with a seven-point lead, 15-40 to go in the ball game. Now, here's where I'm surprised Maryland doesn't get out and really try to put some pressure on the ball because with Williams out of the game, Carowell and Dunleavy have to do all the ball handling, and they go zone against this team. Matt Christensen fighting for position with Martisic. The ball into the hands now on the floor. Christensen traveled. That's 15-15. Duke turnovers. Well, you're playing in a game like this, you are going to turn it over some to try to get the pace that you want. Let's set the quintet on the floor now for Maryland. Morris, Dixon, Blake has it. Gets it in the hands of Danny Miller and Martisic. Here's Blake. And see the versatility of Carowell. He comes out and plays the point guard defensively. Very valuable ball player. His high school teammate, Lauren Woods, had another huge game yesterday. 16, 12, and four blocks against Stanford. He had a big game against Maryland, 13, 10, and seven blocks. So that transfer really paying off for the Arizona. Don Levy for three. Nope. Morris, nice job. Good timing. Here's Blake. Underneath the pass and the foul. Probably a pretty good foul. Don't give the easy shot. Now, here also is a problem for Duke. You've got two swing men that are playing the guard spot. So you have bad defensive balance because nobody's back. Maryland takes advantage of it. Danny Miller shoots two. 6'8 sophomore, Mount Holly, New Jersey. Only shooting 61%. He's got a much better stroke than that. This Maryland team, as a basketball team, shooting 69% for the line. Duke, as usual. Good free throw shooting team shooting 76%. Big differential there. Mike Krzyzewski has sent his three, three of his freshmen back on the floor now. Boozer, Horvath, and Jason Williams back at the point. Miller one for two this trip. 
And here comes the press. Good recognition by Williams. Horvath looking for that jumper down in the corner. Nice pass to Boozer. Good defense by Morris. I think Martisic got the piece of that. It was Martisic. Oh, wow. Great play by Blake. Using his body to shield the defender. Knew Morris was coming down, filling the lane. Excellent play. Four-point game. Dunleavy. With the answer for Duke. Dunleavy. Amazing how these freshmen just keep impressing each and every time on both sides. That one kicked out of bounds. And let's take a look at that last basket. Now watch how he shields the defense by twisting his body. He knew Morris was coming in behind and it opened things up perfectly. Taken away. But Carrollwell was on the line. Well, that saved Maryland not only a turnover, but it could have been a basket as well. Dixon's got to hit the first free guy. Now Blake has it way out near midcourt. Dixon, jumper, no. Carrowell brings it down for Duke. Nice block out on Morris by Carrowell. Not many things this guy doesn't do pretty well. The only senior on the starting five, Chris Carrowell for Duke. Skip pass in the corner. Nice touch back by Dunleavy. And here's Carrowell again. Recognition and a foul as Dunleavy goes up. But Morris got all ball on that one. That's a good play by Carrowell and a smart cut that time by Dunleavy. CBS Hoops next Saturday. UCLA and North Carolina Saturday at 4 o'clock. And a doubleheader for you on Sunday. St. John's at UConn or Illinois at Michigan. That's at 1 o'clock. Good to see Barkley back. I watched him sit on that bench in the DePaul-St. John's game. You know how much that young man likes to play. Good to see him back in there. That's an outstanding big, big East contest there. Don Levy misses the first, and that, uh, to be specific and precise, is a what we call a split regional, not a doubleheader. No. 13-25. Blake to Danny Miller. Don Levy is guarding him. Here's Morris. Finds Marta Sancho. Oh, wow. Oh, caught that one with his chest. <laughs> That was unexpected result. Bad hands, good chest, and the put it back. There's Five that, point game. There's that zone again. Horvath would like that jump shot. There it is. Horvath. Excellent. Inside, out to the wings instead of out to the top of the key. Very well diagnosed by Duke, and Horvath can shoot that shot. A three pointer for Nick Horvath. There's Blake, guarded by Williams. Uh, here's, where, here's where Williams cannot do any hand checking. He's got two fouls. He's got to stay on the floor for Duke. Foul is on Horvath, his first. At the conclusion of today's game, we'll select the Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. Chevy will make a contribution to each school's general scholarship fund. That a tradition for over a quarter of a century. Yeah, yeah. Morris gets it in the hands of Blake. Now Nate James on him. Horvath. Now they're back in the zone. Now the Duke's not sure right now. Battier is not guarding anybody. They're confused. Now Battier gets out. But he did one thing very intelligently. He guarded the basket and, and said, hey, I'm, I'll give you the outside job, but I'm not going to give anybody a layup. After the Morris miss, this one put up by Williams, and he's fouled as he hits the floor. How about that smart play by Williams? Realizing he was going to get fouled, threw it up to the basket, and maybe get himself an opportunity to go to the line. You know, when Duke lost their first two games of the year, that's the first time that's happened since the 58-59 season, their inside game was non-existent against Stanford and Connecticut. They were 3 for 21 from their inside players. Obviously much improved by now. Duke has won 10 in a row. Here's Battier. This is that one. Morris, he's got McCall at the other end. Two. And a fault Williams on that one. He fell asleep and let McCall run right by him. McCall, Baxter, and Drew Nicholas on the floor now for Maryland. The Terrapins trail by five. Six.
in the corner. Underneath, oh, no foul. No call there, and that was McCall again. Boy, he brings excitement to the game. McCall! Whoops. <laughs> Football mentality there. That's not the shot you want. You want him to bring the excitement, leave the shots alone. But give the kid credit. He just started coming out for practice December the 14th after suffering that knee injury in football. Pat, Pat. Oh, my boy. Foul by Dunleavy. Duke gets in a lot of trouble when they just try to rotate the ball on the perimeter. Good lead pass by Morris. Good catch by McCall. I think we're going to see Cincinnati move up to number one. Stanford fall, Connecticut fall. Maybe Arizona slide in there by Auburn. Auburn uh, still showing that they can win. They were the surprise team last year, but getting it done. Florida State, I mean Florida, 12 and 2 solid. Syracuse probably going to move up. Got to give them some respect being undefeated. That good foul was on 34. Mike Duke trying to win here and put an end to a 14-game Maryland home win streak on this floor. Here's Dixon. Oh, that was a tough play for Williams not to pick up the foul. Dixon did a very smart thing there, just took him down inside one-on-one. -on -one. He's got that leaping ability to go over, and Maryland stays in his own. McCall running out top. Carowell guarded by McCall. Williams, left corner. See how McCall's dropping down when that ball goes to the wing? They've got the open man on this side for three. Huge. Carowell catch it. 13 points for Chris Carowell. We talked about those early season games that Duke lost, but Carowell was playing a magnificent basketball in the garden. Had 28 against Stanford, his big game of the year. Now, Carowell and Morris uh, had at each other, and Carowell was called for the foul. Six team fouls already here in the second half against Duke. Dixon. I, I, if I were Dixon, I'd take Williams again. They should clear out for him, pick up another foul on him. Baxter and Battier. They should just clear out for Dixon and make Williams have to guard him on the dribble. See, McCall doesn't realize how to get out of the way. There it is. Very smart play. Third foul on the freshman point guard. And Dixon is telling McCall, like in football, don't have all your receivers in the same place. McCall Tonight on was CBS, 60 minutes, touched by an angel and the 26th annual People's Choice Awards. That's the lineup tonight. I guess if you're a quarterback, and he was runner-up for ACC freshman of the year was McCall, you're usually given the directions, and here you don't see Dixon going over and telling the quarterback what to do. But that was a good play by Dixon. Now Gary Williams is going to bring McCall over to the bench, and Steve Blake is back on the floor. And uh, a quick bit of instruction on the bench. Dixon, one of two. And as a coach, you can never fault the guy that gives you the effort. Eventually, he'll understand the discipline of the plays. But he puts it out on that floor. 54-48, Battier. Morris with the foul. That's his second touch foul in this half where he thought he had another outstanding block. You know, in the first half, and it kind of crept up on us, but Sean Battier had six blocks in that first half. Duke's all-time record for a game is 10 that Cherokee Parks had a number of years ago. Battier at the free throw line. Shoots one more. Here's the preseason all-ACC team. Battier and Morris along with Coda Collier and Wake Forest Robert O'Kelly. Well, Battier sure hasn't hurt himself at all, neither is Morris in that uh, end of the season, which is a much more important all-ACC team. Back to an eight-point margin for Duke. Dixon looks underneath for Miller. And it's thrown away by Morris. You know, with nine minutes to go, I think it wouldn't be a bad idea to force Williams to guard somebody on a clear out again. He has a tendency to want a hand check, and he's very aggressive defensively. You'd like to pick up fouls against him. And if you're Maryland, keep Williams off the floor. 
There's another Duke turnover. That's 17 in the game for Shashevsky's bunch. Now Blake will bring it up, and Williams will pick see, him up. See the challenge? Williams takes a challenge and a dribble right away. Danny Miller, Dixon, nice catch and release again. Baxter, no. Carroll bounds off Maryland. Carroll sneaking in there. Baxter would like to have that one back. That's right in the territory where he feels comfortable to put him away. Maryland scored the first four points in the game, then Duke went with 15 unanswered. They have not trailed since. Maryland has uh, climbed to within three, but then Carrollwell with that big three-pointer a moment ago, most significant shot in the last couple of minutes. There's another pretty good shot. Excellent pump fake. I'm surprised Morris went for it that easily. Nice job by Jason Williams. Underneath, Danny Miller. Battier's there, and Battier harassed him. That was another block by Battier, and that one he blocked on the way up. May James picks up the foul, and Baxter goes to the free throw line. Well, Maryland's doing a good job today negating that major advantage Duke usually has going to that foul line a lot more than their opponents. Lonnie Baxter shoots one and one. Maryland now four for 11 from the Not free throw line. Not a good free throw line. shooting team. Beautiful bounce pass. Williams could not quite control it. And that was not kicking the ball. Blake, back to Baxter, charge. They erased the basket. Yep, that's a charge. Oh, that's a, the king of the nation in charges is the all-time Duke leader. And he was waiting on this one. Look, watch him get his feet organized, takes the charge. Beautiful job on his part. And if you're counting for his career, that's the 77th time. 19 on the year, I guess. And Baxter picks up his fourth foul. Martis is getting ready to come on for Gary Williams here from the corner. Nope. That's Boozer over the back. Really think that Duke in their offensive set against zones, though, is going to have to start getting that ball inside on the foul line area, splitting the seams a little bit. They're very content to rotate it on the perimeter, and you then will live or die with a three-point shot. Baxter 0 for 4 at the free throw line now. Really having problems. And 3 for 16 from the field. So a woeful shooting afternoon for Lonnie Baxter. And the lead is 10. Got it, Carowell. That was some follow through, wasn't it? Because Blake was right in his face. Maryland calls time. And this is the biggest lead of the ball game. Two significant threes from the senior Chris Carowell in the last couple of minutes. Now, what about the NCAA tournament heritage of these two teams? The 1992 National Championship in Minneapolis, Duke against Michigan. A guy named Grant Hill had 18 points and 10 rebounds. Well, not a bad ball player there at all, a 20-point win. That game really wasn't a 20-point basketball game. And then we're going to see Providence, Maryland. There's Tom McMillan, his patented tour turnaround jumper, Lenny Elmore, but Ernie D. Gregorio was the man of the hour in this one. Sensational second half by Providence to knock Maryland out. This, of course, has been the site of two national championships in Cole Fieldhouse. The Texas Western historic game with Kentucky. 1966. That's right, and then uh, Jacksonville and UCLA. Sidney Wicks making the great transformation in that ball game. And Artis Gilmore, that Jacksonville team. One of John Wooden's clubs that won a national championship that you may say wasn't one of his great ones, but they still ended up winning it. Here's Dixon. <laughs> Defended by Battier. What more can you ask of this guy? Is he a good all-around player or not? Pretty amazing. Carowell and Battier. Now back to the man-to-man. -man. And here's Boozer, one of the three freshmen on the floor. A little high-low action, Boozer and Battier. Nicely done. 
Well, we saw Battier down on the other end with a beautiful defensive play, and his rebounding's been excellent. He doesn't throw the ball away. And watch this little drop step with a high-low move between he and Boozer. He's going to just drop stepping right around. Morris, good job by Battier. And that is the fourth foul on Terrence Morris. Well, this young Duke team won at Virginia in overtime Wednesday night, 109 to 100. And they're on the verge of taking this one away. With seven and a half to go, big difference at the free throw line where they have 11 of 13. Carowell with two significant three pointers for Duke. Well, there's that senior leadership that they're getting from Carowell when they need it. Duke now has got 23 straight ACC wins. And amazingly, they've won 12 of the last 14 here in Cole Fieldhouse, which when you got to figure, they played against some outstanding Maryland clubs during that run. Well, last year here with that Steve Francis led club, Duke won big 82-64. Here's Blake, nope. James goes up for Duke, it's on the floor. And Terrence Morris hits the deck. Well, AFC playoffs, the wild card game coming next from out of the Kingdom in Seattle. Uh, a couple of teams that are really struggling but backed into the playoffs. And Dan Marino, Jimmy Johnson with Miami go up against Mike Holmgren and John Kitna. Seattle, that's next. Terrence Morris, one of five on the preseason All-American selection. Chris Porter, Quentin Richardson. And the fans just happy to see Maryland nail a free throw. It's really been one of the things that's hurt them. Now they pick up full court pressure with Williams out of the game. Maryland 8-0 at home this year. They won their last six last year. So they've got a string of 14, but their last defeat was that uh, trouncing by Duke on this floor last year. Here's Dunleavy. Rejected by Baxter. Blake has it. Boy, both teams doing a good job blocking shots. Dixon. Oh, he just can't get any breaks on that outside shot. The release is good. The touch looks good. Rotation is there. It just won't go in the hole. Carowell puts it uh, in Dunleavy's hands. <laughs> Tip is good. Left hand. That was James. Well, I tell you, Dunleavy has got so much size on guards. He can back them down, shoot right over the top. And we're told Billy has got great court awareness. Savvy, he's the son of a coach, of course. Mike Dunleavy. Again, waiting too long. Baxter was open earlier. Tip no good. Baxter puts the shoulder down and muscles. I thought that was a good no call by the official. Gary Williams on that sideline said there's still time to come back in this one the way they play. Here is Dunleavy. They... Now with this size they have on the perimeter, they're throwing right over the top of the press. Not a wise shot. Plenty of time. You're trying to use a little clock here. Here is the CBS Sports Line stat of the game. It comes at the free throw line where Duke 11 of 13 to Maryland's rather anemic 6 of 14 for completes the game stats. Go to cbs.sportsline.com. Baxter to Morris. Double comes from Carowell. Since both of these teams block, the, not only the man that's guarding has got the capability to block it, they really help out well inside. You don't have a chance down in there and you get the ball to maneuver around a lot. You either make your quick move and get the shot off or get the ball back out and get it back quickly. How many times today have we seen a defender come in to block a shot? That's it. Big loss there for Duke with 5.27 to go. That's five on Shane Battier. He goes to the bench with 14 points. Now Carowell's got to be the guy to carry that leadership load. See Steve Wojciechowski, who is uh, on Mike Krzyzewski's staff now as an assistant, former outstanding point guard at Duke. And one of his former staff members, Tommy Amaker, had a big win here in Washington, D.C. yesterday as his Seton Hall team knocked off Georgetown. Morris with 13 points now. Here's the confidence that Gary Williams has in his team. He's bringing the pressing squad back out there with McCall. 
they're not out of it. Two for two for Terrence Morris. That's four straight for Morris. Helping to pick up a little bit that woeful free throw shooting by Maryland. McCall puts the pressure on Williams. Now Dunleavy trapped from Blake. Left side, Nate James. Uh, if you're Duke right now, you want to use some clock and frustrate this pressing type defense. Carowell over McCall. Boozer, strong move, blocked by Baxter. Boy, does he have good timing. Here's Blake. Plenty of time still to be patient here if you're Maryland. We've got Battier out of this ball game the rest of the way. Nice entry pass, Drew Nicholas, an off-balance shot by Baxter. And there's Dunleavy coming in from his guard position, playing right over the top of McCall. Four and a half to go in this half. Maryland with uh, two more field goals than turnovers. And what Mike Krzyzewski wants to see happen here is to his team to get on the free throw line. Using clock, making Maryland become over aggressive. Now, for McCall, you don't want to foul now. Carowell, oh, beauty. Oh, what a nifty pass. He said he'd take over senior leadership. That was right as the clock was winding down. And uh, Carlos Boozer, the freshman, has 13 points. Big turnover. You got to go press now if you're Maryland. You can't let Duke just hold this ball and take 20, 30 seconds off the clock. Back out in front with Williams. Boozer had a lazy pass. It really cost Duke in the Virginia game. You saw that one was a lot swifter. I'm sure that he got a lesson on that. This is what Mike Krzyzewski wants. He wants his team on that foul line. That foul is going to be on McCall. His first. And here's Carwell, just a sensational play on the inside. Froze Baxter. His first team on the team. He does have it. Plenty of heart. Returning for the Terrapins, 3 1 Dixon. And, and Carwell, the senior, goes to the free throw line. Chris for the season, an 80% free throw shooter. And misses that one, but still, that's where Duke wants to be the rest of this game, on that line. Help. Blake to Baxter. Followed by Morris. No block out that time by Carowell. Morris. 16 points for the preseason All-American. That was all. Oh, I don't oh, yes. Now, what would they call that in the NFL? <laughs> That ball was thrown backwards, so it's a lateral. Might you call that a backward lateral? That was a lateral. Not if you were in Tennessee yesterday. CBS Sports coverage of the road to the Final Four is sponsored by the new Impala by Chevrolet. Let's go for a drive. Propecia, talk to your doctor today. And by America Online. So easy to use, no wonder it's number one. 3.01 to go in this one. Carlos Boozer, the freshman, has a look similar to that of Shane Battier. Well, there is a uh, barber in Durham who services both of these young men, but also cuts hair for some guys from North Carolina. There's uh, fraternization among these rival schools. Well, they'll be facing each other coming up for the first go around in a couple of weeks. Blake telegraphed the pass. Williams right on it. Williams to Carowell. Carowell eight for eight free throws against Virginia. Wow, no calls on these hand checking out front. Duke throws it away. Tonight on 60 Minutes, if you or someone close to you is thinking about adopting a child, you don't want to miss 60 Minutes. Also, Ed Bradley talks with Denzel Washington. That's all tonight on 60 Minutes. 20 Duke turnovers tonight. Here's Blake in the lane. Nice dish. Off the glass for Lonnie Baxter. Lonnie Baxter. Down to 10. A lot of time here. 
There's the trap. Carrollwell brings it safely across underneath. Boozer. Well, he can deliver with the left hand, the right hand, the two-hand power jam. He's got good hands. Has excellent awareness when guys drive to the basket to keep his eye on that ball. That will be Maryland ball. Williams probably got away with a push on that one. Blake had him beat. Terrence Morris will throw it in for the Maryland Terrapins. Dixon still can't get well, the three to go. There's Danny Miller with a good follow-up. There's Dunleavy again. Morris oh. off balance gets it and will shoot a free throw. Way to stay with it. You know, one of the things that, that Dixon, you know, his jump shot still looks good, but what he's got to realize, if you're in a drought like he is, don't take any threes that you don't really feel comfortable with. He kind of forced that last shot. And there's Morris again on the inside. Good follow-up. Chance to go to the line. He's been hitting these free throws now. And if Maryland hadn't had such a woeful performance from the line, it'd really be in this game. And it continues. Somebody better come back to help out. Eight of 17 from the free throw line for Maryland. That's a good call of a timeout there. Nate James, uh, probably the one guy you don't want to have ball in his hands uh, against that pressure. Time called Duke. Early in this half, Maryland uh, got within three, but then Carrollwell with a couple of three-pointers, and all of a sudden, Duke was up by 16. Well, Vern, there's a man that knows a little bit about basketball. Was a great player at George Washington University here in the city. Played under the legendary Bill Reinhardt, where he credits learning a lot of his basketball. Sitting over here watching the game. The great Red Arbach. Stolen. Nicholas. Yes! Drew Nicholas for three. And a wise timeout for Maryland. 128 to go, down seven. Repossession game. Seven point game with 128 to go. Duke has three timeouts remaining. And Maryland won. I think if you're Duke right now, you want to finish this game off by going to the foul line. Try to go ahead and expand as much of the 35 second clock as you can. I'd keep the ball out of James's hands unless it's for a jump shot as the clock winds down. Let Williams and Carrollwell be the primary ball handlers. They have to call a timeout. Timeout called because Carrollwell could not get it inbounds. Still 128 to go. Still a seven-point game. Well, one Vern, fewer timeouts. I'm going to throw one wild one at you here. Although okay. it's tough to do with Terrence Morris on the, the guy out of bounds. Might not be a bad time to go long if you're Duke. Throw it long instead of short. They do get it in Dunleavy's hands. And oh, is foul ball. from behind. The official that was blocked made that call. I thought, I'll tell you what, I thought it was a good idea. Maryland had so much pressure on the ball up front. I thought it was a good time to go over the top and attack it just one time. You see here with Morris. There's everybody crowding around. I think it's a tie-up. Sure looked like a hell ball. Yep. Ten fouls, so Dunleavy gets two. You know, against Virginia in overtime, Duke scored on every offensive possession, either field goals or free throws, and this guy was a big part of it. Had his biggest game of the year with 21. He's going to be an outstanding player. That was his first ACC game. Misses the first. There's that height again. Yep. You know, one of the things about this young Duke team, when you think of all these conference battles, they can start the season 2-0, but on the road with two wins. Not many people are going to break through at Virginia and at Maryland. Well, after they won at Virginia, they were walking down toward the locker room, and Mike Dunleavy came up to Krzyzewski, his coach, and said, are they all this tough? And Mike said, yeah, welcome to the ACC. Nice. Williams, nice speed. Oh. How strong is he? How strong is he? And his fundamental ability to finishing shots off with two hands on the ball is what made this play. Watch him go up there. Two hands, what a finisher. 
Returning 3-1, Dixon, 15, Danny Miller. Here's Williams, understanding where he wants to put that ball, but watch Boozer again. So many young big guys try to finish soft. He finishes tough. This for his 18th point. Nope. Blake grabs it for Maryland. A 10-point margin, 110 to go. He's got to get it up there quickly now, taking too much time. Baxter gets it off the feed from Blake. Baxter, we have one minute to play. Oh, doesn't love he got by with one there. Carowell. Timeout, Duke. Duke and Maryland each with a timeout remaining 54.2 left on the clock. And the possession arrow favors the Blue Devils. And if you're Maryland now, you have to go ahead and foul as quickly as you can. I mean, they're down to a four possession game. They cannot afford to let this clock tick at all. And they've got guys on the floor to foul with McCall and Holden. Taj Holden making his first appearance in the ball game, number 45. Taking too much time. Dunleavy. Back it comes Not outside. a good play by Maryland. There you go. You've got about nine seconds they wasted there. If you're going to foul, don't let any of those seconds expire. Take the chance. Even though Duke's a good free throw shooting team, you can't pick out who you want to foul, but you've got to shorten the game up. And the senior, Chris Carrowell goes to the line for the second time this afternoon. And for Maryland, with big expectations this year in the league, they had owned NC State down there with straight wins. And uh, so they start the season 0-2 in the league and losing one at home, which will hurt them. They've got to go on the road to Georgia Tech, then home against Wake Forest and Clemson before visiting North Carolina and Florida State to round out the month. But when you lose one to a top team at home like this, you've got to get a breakthrough game of your own somewhere down the line. Blake for three. It's the last timeout for Maryland. I think good strategy now when you call that timeout is to go right back out and play. 38-5 left. Maryland out of timeouts now. 38.5 left in regulation. Now the key again is to foul and just take your chances. Down seven. They can't afford to let any ticks go off. And if you look out there, you say, well, gee, try to get the ball to Boozer or James and foul them, but you can't wait even if it's, if it's Williams. Carrowell gets it in the hands of Dunleavy. Boy, and it goes back to the guy you don't want on the line. Good job by Dunleavy running right back down court hard to create the passing lane. So many times the turnover is charged against and created by the passer, but many times it's the fault of the recipients who don't come and create the passing lane. Maybe maybe as many as 50% of the times, you know? A lot of times you see a low post man that's standing there, he looks open, he doesn't come to meet the ball, and it's a turnover by the passer. Carowell cans this one. And we'll shoot one more. And Mike Krzyzewski wants his team to pick up maybe three quarter to occupy a little bit of the clock, making Maryland take some time to bring the ball up the floor. Watch him here. See, Williams comes up. Make sure they can't roll the ball up the floor. 20 points for Chris Carrowell, leading scorer in the game. Here's Morris. Oh, boy. That was Carrowell. What a great defensive play, and the fact that he helped out on the double team and then hustled back to guard his man. Morris will throw it in. Looks for Dixon, kicks it outside. Blake way outside. A little bit out of his range. Baxter with a putback is good. And good play by Boozer, not the foul there. Foul in the backcourt. The executive producer of CBS Sports, Terry Ewert, the coordinating producer of NCAA Basketball, is Bob Dikas. Today's game directed by Mike Arnold. Pennzoil in the half, produced by Vin DeVito and directed by Linda Molino. The associate director of today's game, Ken Mack. And our broadcast associates, Fred Johnson and David Schwinger. The technical director, Steve Gorsuch. And our statistician, Chuck Gardner. 
Dunleavy gets the first, shoots one more. And watch the technique. Dunleavy with a couple of stitches in that eye from the Virginia game where he's got an elbow. Another solid performance by him. Yeah, Blake is going way outside yeah, I, now. I think that's out of his range. It's more of a throw. Carowell. Oh, they're trying to follow him. There's no call. James. Maybe James. Ball game. A 14-game home winning streak Maybe. comes to a close for the Maryland Terrapins. Now the Duke Blue Devils go to 2-0 and in ACC play, both wins on the road. It's like a second home court for them here at Cole Fieldhouse. They have played really well over this past uh, 10 years or so. They've won 13 of their last 15 games on this floor. Our Chevrolet players of the game for Duke, Shane Battier with 14 points and 7 blocks. And the preseason All-American for Maryland, Terrence Morris, with 18 points and 13 rebounds. Chevrolet will make a contribution to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and to assist those in financial need. A 15-point run in the first half. Stake Duke to a lead they never lost. They win by 10. Billy Packer, Vern Lundquist here in Maryland. Jim Nance along with the Payne Weber Sports Day.